this is this is not dark horse. Hey guys, welcome to Rev and Evan channel. We got a fun video for you tonight. So, We're at the Ford Media yeah, Press launch. Going to give you a first look at the 2024 Mustang. We got a GT here. We got a couple of EcoBoosts. We got a convertible. We got a special guest we're going to introduce in a second. The GT is amazing. We're going to be behind the wheel of this today. We drove the EcoBoost yesterday. Our drive impressions are embargoed, so you'll have to wait a couple days for us to tell you about that. But so much fun so far. All kinds of cool stuff. We're out here in LA, and I want to introduce you to my friend Jake Busey. My oh, man right here. Well, hello. <laughs> if you know the name, you've seen him, famous actor. His dad is Gary Busey, one of my favorite all-time actors. Point Break, the Buddy Holly story. Oh, uh, yeah. Amazing. And this guy's a Ford guy. So how did we meet? We become friends. Yeah, I've been a Ford guy my whole life. I'm into off-road racing. And I got a Raptor. And uh, I was noodling around online. And I'm looking at this new Godzilla engine. And lo and behold, who do I find but Rev and Evan. And in my research, I realized I need to talk to this guy. So I wrote him a little note, asked him a couple of questions, and bam, here we are. <laughs> yeah, so we chatted back and forth. He's going to swap a Godzilla into his Raptor pre-runner. We'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Sick off-road truck. So, figured we're out in L.A. He's in L.A., just finished shooting a movie. Yeah, yeah, glad to be back in town and um, glad that I've been working. Uh, you know, it's very rare for an actor to work consistently, and so I've been out of town for the first half of the year. So, right as I get back home, you're here. It's perfect timing, and I'm really excited and curious because uh, I want to see a Godzilla in an off-road vehicle at my control. Well, right now, uh, the EcoBoost I have is a, it's a Gen 1 EcoBoost. Right. And um, so with the larger EFR turbos and the intercooler and all the things we've done to it, it's got uh, about 650 horse at the flywheel. Nice. And on the roller dyno uh, with the 37 inch tires, it's 485 horsepower. So, uh, and about 500 foot pounds of torque. So I'm thinking with the Godzilla, chances are we might have some numbers that are a little bigger and a little less uh, turbo lag. So you were telling me before, in the dirt, in that thick, heavy Baja dirt, waiting for those turbos to spool is an issue. So you want that cubic inch, you want the instant torque, so he's going Godzilla. But not just any Godzilla, it's going to be hopped up, right? Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I would love to put the three liter Whipple on it and uh, you know some of those ultimate headers you're talking about and really get the thing to make some uh, to some good wheel spool and fun and really you know the thing about it is with a with a push rod v8 you've got you hit that throttle and uh you've got instant torque and you're moving instantly so you come into a berm you want to set up for a jump you tap that throttle and the truck's going where you want it to go sometimes with the uh with the turbo in the dirt you know you uh get into some dangerous territory when you hit the gas and you're waiting for the turbos to spool. So I'm excited about the Godzilla. I think it'll be incredible. Yeah, because in the dirt, and I've, I've very limited dirt experience, but I have driven uh, some Raptors in the dirt, and you really do steer the truck with the throttle with the back end. So oh, yeah. having that instant power, predictable power is important, right? Yeah, absolutely, because you're you're, you, you are steering with your rear wheels, you're, and you're tapping the throttle, and you're, you're kind of brapping it, as we say. You know, you brap, brap this way, and brap, brap that way. You come into a berm, you want to be able to set yourself up by hitting a little throttle and tapping it, and that's what brings your, your ass end around. You can say that. I said a bad word. But uh, yeah, so, so, you know, big V8 power, and that's what all the, uh, the trophy trucks have out there, and that's, what, uh, that's, that's really the standard. So. I'm anxious to, to get that going. So I know you're an off-road guy, but let's switch gears a little bit. Yeah. What do you think of this 2024 Mustang? I got to say this 24 Mustang is gorgeous. I sat in it. The other Mustangs that I've sat in over the past 20 years or so are a little cramped for six foot three, 240 pounds of love. But I was able to get into this and I fit just perfectly fine, nice and roomy. It's really well put together and it's a, just a gorgeous body style. What I love is the subtle nuance of 
you know, Ford really, there was a certain point, I think it was 05, where you really started to see the throwback to the 60s, to the original body styles. Sure, the right? S197 Mustang, total yeah. throwback, Ford yeah. went full retro. Yeah, and it's gorgeous, and I love, like, like with this, when you look at the rear fender, and you look at the, the, the hatchback, it does have, it really calls back to like the 68, the 69, you know, you've got like this nice kind of 68 kind of vibe here, and how it comes back with that straight, and I love how the fender line is like sharp and just kind of runs right out the back, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's actually incredible that you bring that up because the Ford styling guy, when he described the car, he said 67, 68 on the fastback, and especially from the back, the haunches and the big wide yeah, shoulders. I love that. Is, is what they went for. And even on the, you know, the first, this really second gen Mustang, 67, 89, that concave here, uh -huh. and they really, oh, yeah. they really exaggerated it. And they were talking about the way the shadows and the light hits, but it's a lot of great angles, in my opinion. Oh, definitely, and and and, and really like looking at this, you can. It's almost a foreshadowing of like the Mach One, you know, you, like you see the with the way the tail lights are and the way that yeah. recess yeah, yeah. is, like they where they eventually got to with the Mach One with the exaggerated tail lights and all that. Right. So yeah, I, I, it's uh, and it and it has a nice wide stance. It, uh, I mean, it's almost like it, it's almost close to the, the wide body feel. You know what I mean? And yet it's an OEM, just a stock, normal body. It's beautiful. It's yeah. Beautiful. Sticker auto and with active exhaust as much as 486 horsepower. Wow. Wow. That's that's something else. We're allowed to talk those numbers. That's yeah, we good. can talk about horsepower numbers. Nice. My next question is, what do you think of the interior with the modern going to that glass dash versus having a styled gauge, analog older dashboard? I like it. I think, I think we're all ready for it, and I think there's a whole new generation of of drivers and car owners that appreciate that. And we've all had computers and pads and tablets and phones now for so long that um, I don't. I don't think you need to have the round steam gauge look to get the throwback feel anymore. I think, I think we're ready for that, and it and it it's, it looks beautiful, and the way that it feels inside, like the like the density of the foam in the seats, and and the way it feels, and the way the leather is, it's really nice. it feels it does have a European car feel to it. Like, you know, I've been in plenty of Audis and BMWs, and I had a Mercedes, and like you know, like it has a real high quality texture to the inside, which is nice. Ford likes to term that touch points, where you, where you even subconsciously, things you touch and feel, you want to be of high quality. I've even seen Ford, they have a studio, a sound studio, where they will shut the door repeatedly of different vehicles. And subconsciously, the sound of even the door shutting is a sound of quality, like when the door shuts on a German car, a Mercedes-Benz, a BMW. Oh. Yeah, it's that sound of quality. So Ford understands that even when you get out of the car and walk away and shut the door behind you, the sound it makes yeah. resonates in your brain of whether you have a quality piece or not. Yeah. And the fact that even, you, you don't think about things, but we were talking to the, some of the engineers before, the fact that I'm 5'6", five, 5'7", six, five, you're 6'3", and the fact that both of us could fit comfortably and reach the pedals and reach the steering yeah. wheel and see the gauges, is not always even the easiest thing to do to build a car that fits a wide range of people. Yeah, yeah, that's design excellence right there. I mean, to be able to do that, uh, I mean, if you look at a race car, it's made for one person. I sat in, true, you know, I sat in a, <laughs> in a NASCAR and I couldn't really fit because I was not the exact same size as the driver, you know, and so with this to be able to have all kinds of customers from across the world be able to drive it and fit in it. I mean, and and have it have all those great touch point qualities you're talking about. It's 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 nice. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, let's I spin really do. Let's spin around and see what else is here because there's some really neat stuff here. Ford has on the TVs. Abe is on camera. He's at her hanging out with us. Incredible the footage. Oh, it's the, it's the it's Mustangs. the anthology. They're bringing the whole history of the Mustang alive tonight. And over the next couple of days. Hey, oh, hey, Jim. Evan, Jake, how are you? Jim, how are you? So what I was wondering is if you see that HMI screen in your off-road 
vehicle. Yeah. Like a convertible Raptor that you're putting out convertible there. Convertible Raptor. A convertible Raptor <laughs> where we put the electronics in over there and then we can put in there and then you know, the physics of what we do on the track versus what you're doing off road yeah is the same we might apply it differently sure, sure. I mean, yeah so yeah so then maybe we could sit there and program the godzilla motor into this thing into the hmi i'm ready you, you ready to do I'm, that i'm ready to do it so we, we just need to get a couple of the let's engineers out here and we, i think we could build it i tell you i got an <laughs> ear to ear smile let's <laughs> let's build the godzilla in my truck and use all of this hmi and the stuff. convertible because you need Con open air when you're in the desert right convertible. Well, yeah, well, the Broncos the <laughs> have the removable right? hard top. Yeah, yeah, Which, yeah, yeah. I think we could have some fun with that. I need to get a couple of Broncos. Can we work on that? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> the Bronco brand manager I know is somewhere He's around gotta here. He's got to be somewhere. Let's find him. We'll, we'll find him and we'll see if we can't set it up. Well, I'm hog time until he says, okay, yes, you can have two. <laughs> You know, his and hers. But you might need the maybe, you might need this convertible Mustang next to yours in the garage. Uh, certainly do. I got space for it. Well, and if there's uh, space in the garage, that is a need that needs to be yeah. fulfilled. No, they're beautiful. They really are. This this 24 body is gorgeous. And I've heard some horsepower number. Am I allowed to say horsepower numbers? Oh, absolutely. Numbers? I've heard that we've got 500 coming On out the dark of the box. Horse. Yep. Naturally aspirated fourth generation Coyote motor with dual air induction, dual throttle bodies that goes to about 7,400 RPM of red line. Ah, 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 that, that oh, you hear that? And then in this one right here, 480 horsepower out of the natural wow. aspirator, just standing. Because in a convertible, what you really need is 480 horsepower. You, in, in a, you, you absolutely do. But from <laughs> street light to street light, you <laughs> could go, you know, up the California coast with the hair oh blowing, God. the wind blowing in your hair. Yeah, or you, you could at least dust off a few of your uh, your neighbors on the road, and, you know, and beat them there. My God, we could put the 40 inch. And these Maybe come doing. these come with two feet tall tires on them. Yeah, not as big as the ones that are on your truck. No, no, mine are just a little more than three feet. Yeah. So the, the wheels that we have offered, which are, you know, basically twelve wheels across the board. Wow. All of them new from seventeen to twenties, and these are the twenties that are out yeah. as well. Big, big boys. No, they make they fill out the wheel well. They kind of make yeah. you feel like cool while you're driving in your convertible. Yeah, and they get that good traction though too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, you guys. I don't know if anyone out there remembers this one. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, a good friend of my dad's back in the day. Uh, was a tremendous actor. Yeah. Very, very handsome man. He was kind of the Brad Pitt of the 70s. Gotcha. He hit a little bit of a train derailment with his life, sadly. Rest in peace. But I remember being a kid when he still had his act together and he had a TV series called Airwolf. And his name was Jan Michael Vincent. Yep. And he was just the coolest cat before he had his, you know, he ruined his life. But he had a, an amazing 84 convertible with wide stance, big ass wheels. And I remember riding in that thing and you just felt like royalty. And it just rumbled and just ate the road, you know, it was so cool. It, and what we have uh, in that, everybody has their Mustang story, right? Right. Like everybody has a story, whether you own one, but you remember as a kid, like yourself being in there, yeah. um, like, it, like some of the race car drivers that used to race with Carol in the 60s. Oh. Um, yeah. Like some of them remember being in their car with the dads when they were going to the racetracks. Oh, like, and so everybody oh. has a, a Mustang story, and, and it's always good to like, when you can celebrate the seven generations of Mustang stories. Right. Thousands of movies that it's been in. I know, and, right? Like, uh, and all the music videos and all of it. it it's part of culture. Yeah. And and those are some of the stories that do it. So thanks for sharing that. That is a, that's a cool story. Yeah, I mean, and then uh, so oh, on that topic, one of my favorite things that Mustang has done. Yeah. Was uh, was it ten years ago? 15, 10 to fifteen years ago, the McQueen bullet. So we've done what, what, three of the bullets. Done three of those. Okay. Right. Um, we did one in two thousand one. Okay. Um, well, in the Gen 4 Mustang. Right. Um, we did one in the Gen 5 Mustang, the Hunter Green or yeah. the Black. Um, and then we did one in the, in the Gen 6 one as well, um, where we had actually his son come up. And Chad. We, Chad. I grew up with Chad. Chad's so Chad, friend, yeah. we had Chad up at Barrett Jackson. 
up on the stage, um, and we auctioned off VIN 1 of the bullet to support the children's home that his dad was raised in. And we raised more than half a million dollars for that charity. Oh um, and, yeah, and that, that car actually, you know, it is the best chase scene ever, oh, as far as I'm incredible. concerned, in a movie. Oh, yeah. Um, but it, that, that, that Mustang, like, launched people's stories, and for being able to give back to, you know, what Steve McQueen went through as a, yeah. as a kid, yeah. to be able to give back, that's a way that, like, Mustang kind of gives back, the Mustang community gives back. But that car is so much right. fun, it's so cool to do. Yeah, it's a, isn't it amazing to think of like where people come from and where they go to? And it seems that people who have had it very difficult early in life are real tough fighters yeah. and they make it very far in life. And yeah. You look at how cool and how badass Steve McQueen was. Yeah. You realize, well, he grew up in a, you had to be, yeah. you had to be tough yeah. and that that kind of make that gives you that gravitas gives you those steel hangers there yep. that, you know that he had and uh, and the car fit him yeah. but yeah, yeah there's yeah. some of those folks you know like you think of Carol Shelby or Bob Bondra we were talking about yeah. Bob earlier yeah. those folks who came from you know basically nothing yeah. and pulled themselves up by their bootstraps I mean Carol was like a chicken farm and the, and the the actually all of the chickens died from a disease. Oh, like man. he used to show up in the races in his chicken yeah, farming outfit to, to actually go and race. That is amazing. So those people who face some of those adversity, yeah, they, they are like you're saying they're Over stronger and they and they and then they can they give back to the community as well. Yeah. Sure. Well. Um, Great it's so to nice you of you to tonight. join us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't yeah. wait Thanks to hear and see some of the pictures yeah. of that Godzilla raptor going yeah. across oh, the yeah. desert. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you. I'll send you some video of it 10 feet in the air. In the air, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoping that it lands appropriately <laughs> so you can get I'll back sure in. I'll make sure it does. <laughs> I'll make sure it does. Oh, it was so much yeah. fun. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And thanks, Evan, for uh, putting us all Revin together. Revin with Evan. You know, Revin with Evan here. Hell yeah. Revin Evan, man. We try to have some fun on the channel. Yeah, and, and, and stay tuned. Look out for the Busey build, swapping the Godzilla, swapping the EcoBoost and the Godzilla and making it ha the most difficult thing in the world happen. We're going to do it. We're going to have fun with your truck. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think it's going to be a great deal. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We like to have some fun with Mustangs and Fords, and we appreciate that you guys like to come along for the ride. So you guys saw Jake Busey, but before he left, we had to come out and check out his pre-runner Raptor truck. Look at this thing. How cool is this, Jake, man? You got the roll cage, fully jacked up, yeah. awesome suspension. This thing rips through the dirt, and he's invited us back. He's invited us to Baja. So Abe and I are going to come back out here when we have a chance to really rip this thing. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a blast. Oh, yeah. We'll have a blast. We'll go down and we'll hang out with my buddy George Peters of Ultimate Arm. And he has uh, three donkeys racing in, in San Felipe. And that's where we'll go. And it'll be a vacation on the sand, margaritas, tacos. And we could do a little work on the, uh, on the truck, too. You going to let me drive it? Of course. Of course. That is before we swap the engine. <laughs> hey, I'm cool, man. My first uh, deal down in Baja. We're going to have a fun time, Jake, man. No, it'll be fantastic. I can't wait to do it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll have a blast. Yeah. Mexico, here we come. I'm ready. Sombreros. <sighs> Tequila. <laughs> Surfboards. Women. And guns. <laughs> Let's take a look at his truck. All right.